Your name, QCB. Yes. What does it stand for? Where did it come from? Queen City Bastard. Because when I first started in Radio 99, I would come on and do these comedy sports flashes. Mm -hmm. And I would, call, I would end up by calling everybody a bastard, right? My old program director, DJ Stout, the suit, because he always wore suits. Q, but Tremaine, I got to come up with a name for you. He said, what, what do you do a lot? He said, I hear you. He called people, I said, I call people bastard a lot. I said, well, I can't be called the old dirty bastard. We're going to get sued by Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. And he was like, damn, we're in the Queen City. We just called you the Queen City bastard. I lost a church gig because they found out what it meant. Mm. I hosted a, like, they praise in the park. I yeah. hosted a Valentine's Day yeah. event. They had a meeting, and one of the guys was sitting on the show, like, y'all know what QCB said for, don't you? Like mm. some hating-ass deacon. Yeah. Man, she contacted me. said, we can't even back at the church no more. I said, what's wrong? She said, well, we found out what your name meant. We can't. I said, huh? Yo, <laughs> heathen-ass pastor. But go ahead. He was in Onyx beside me. Talking about don't say nothing cute. Uh, I'll see you he Sunday. Was Onyx beside yeah, me. he was Onyx beside me. But oh, y'all gonna shit. lose because of my name. But whatever, whatever. Don't say nothing cute. But whatever. But anyway. What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day, with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y, and today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have a treat for y'all and a treat for myself, actually, because we are joined, ladies and gentlemen, by the one and only Charlotte's own, the infamous... I mean, I, he has so many aliases. I'm going to let him go down it. <laughs> you can catch him uh, recently on Fox Sports Radio Charlotte yeah. every Monday and Friday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, you've seen him on your television, especially if you're from the North Carolina, Charlotte area. Yeah. You've definitely heard him on the airwaves. You've seen him in public, whether it's at a baseball game or a senior citizen strip club. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined <laughs> by the one and only Tremaine QCB Sloan. What's up, man? My guy. What's good? Man, it's good to be here, man. Appreciate that. Um, let me start by let me start by uh giving you your flowers. Uh so this is a highly anticipated episode. Okay. I wanted this to happen for a minute. We've planned on this happening for a minute. And um, I just wanted it to be right. Right. We first met maybe two-ish years ago, yes. a little over two years ago. And I had the podcast, but it was slow. I'm like, I want it to be at a certain level when I bring you on because it's only right. right. You're someone that has a prestigious career in the entertainment industry, whether it's from radio or television. So I wanted to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, the carpet was rolled out uh, perfectly. And let me just tell the people real quick that um, QCB, I, I would not be as far as I am today in Charlotte, both just from getting around the city of Charlotte and... As far as my brand, the day by day by day podcast would not be as far today if it wasn't for you, for QCB, straight up for a few reasons. One, okay, you being from Charlotte, you're a Charlotte native. You yeah. live in Charlotte your whole life. You've you, you got me hip to so many spots out here, so many yeah. things to do out here, so many people to connect with out here. Oh yeah, like you pointed me into the right direction in Charlotte, you know, to really be on a good straight path. And then you brought me on the radio, Fox Sports Radio. We've been on there probably what, like four or five times. Absolutely. You know, you're a Cowboys fan. I'm an Eagles fan. We talk. Yeah. You know, we we talk junk. And yeah. I remember the first time I did it, I was so nervous. I was very nervous. I think I did terrible the second time. I did okay, but then after that. I studied from afar, like I would just look at how your professionalism worked, right. how you would have all your soundboards laid out on the yep. radio, how you would have your fact sheets, how you would have everything lined up, and then your, your 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 improvised game, being able to improvise. I really was like in the background soaking all that in. I don't, I don't even think you noticed, but right. and that got me sharp to where like our most recent episodes, I felt so natural and felt calm on there. And that transitioned to the podcast world. That's why I said it, you know, I wouldn't be as far with my brand. If not for you. Right. It's right? so like the episode of Martin on Varnell Hill. You was jotting. Well, see. You I, was jotting. Martin exactly. said, you're jotting, brother. Damn. Exactly. You exactly. was jotting. Well, see, Varnell straight Jack Martin. <laughs> he, he straight he Jack did. Martin. Did you miss me? Right, yeah, right. He, he, he was he, taking notes. Martin said, you're jotting. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Remember, because what happened was he was in L.A. at the studio, and he started by saying, what's up? Yeah. Varnell did. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, and Martin and Gina looked at each other like, right. no, huh? this motherfucker did he not. He took the damn what's up. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that so, was crazy. Yeah, but um, on the real, it was just all the you know the goods of you being a professional in the industry uh radio especially because yeah. podcast is essentially a radio so it is, absolutely. i just wanted to make sure that you know that 
I, you know, definitely soaked up a lot of game from the way you run your thing. Oh, man, I appreciate it. I mean, that, did that come with, like, a, a certificate to Chick-fil-A or something or a Kale Wynn season pass? Like, you really gave us some props. Yeah. It, it's just verbal props. That's it? Uh, spiritual. I, I felt <laughs> that that was, that was I felt it in my spirit. You know. Well, we'll we'll toast today. You yes, got something in a cup. I appreciate it. My God. How, now, is my microphone straight? They keep going back and forth. Is, is the sound gonna be good? Yeah, just bring it a little bit closer to you. It, it's good. I don't know. I gotta. I got. I gotta fix it. Yeah, it, it just lo it's loose. I don't know right. why it keeps doing that. Okay, then it's gonna go back. But you know what? I actually, do got something for you. I got something for you right here. What so got, today's partner? episode of Day by Day podcast is brought to you by Magic Mind. Shout out to Magic yeah, Mind, is. owners and creators of the Productivity Shot, which is essentially what it sounds like. It's a productivity shot. You don't need coffee. It comes with twelve natural ingredients that increases your productivity, decreases your stress, and also increases your focus and energy. So okay. only has 55 milligrams of caffeine. So if you're someone that relies on caffeine, this is a great transition to just something more natural that will allow you to focus on things. So me being an editor and podcaster, whether it's me coming up with episodes, editing episodes, I take my Magic My Productivity shot beforehand and just has me dialed in. Okay. You know, and it's all natural ingredients. Like I said, it has maca root, vitamins B2, vitamins B12, vitamins B3, uh, turmeric, a whole bunch of natural essential ingredients you need to really dial in to the best size of your brain, which creates that tunnel vision when you want to be focused and be productive. So you being a radio host, yeah. this would literally be perfect for I'm you to it. take before you before your um before your show. So I want you to take this with you. I'm definitely gonna take you it with me. You can choose to take I a shot whenever, it. now, before your radio, whatever. Okay. Give it a shot and I then will. let me know what you think. Um and then for those tuning in, if you're interested in checking out Magic Mind, check the description of this episode because I will provide you with a promo code to receive 20% off of your Magic Mind order. Again, this is not a game, ladies and gentlemen. 20% off of your Magic Mind order if you follow the link in the bio. If you want to increase your productivity, want to increase your focus, want to increase your energy, and want to decrease your stress, then tap in with Magic Mind and get you a productivity shot or two. Elevate mental clarity. Yep. I like that. I'm definitely, man. I appreciate it for real. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, man. I take these before, you know, my busiest days, which is are, which are the weekends, because all I'm doing is editing and planning yeah. and writing stuff out. And, I mean, I just be going. You know what I mean? Um. So, anyway. Let me ask you something before we get started. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Um, has this seat been sterilized? <laughs> because, because, well, I, I'm a fan. Of course I'm a fan. And what I see come on, sit on this seat, these women, it, it look like you get it from the Zeus app. I don't know where they come from. I think it's the Zeus app. They're a bunch of baddies. And man, they stories. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know if this seat been like ammonia. Mm -hmm. How's this seat? Been, I, I, am I good? So I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> I wash I wash my sheets on my seats probably like <sighs> once every okay. other episode. Okay. Like and then I pay attention to who's on here. So say you're wearing. Well, I, I do too. I, I do too. I do too. <laughs> you, you, well, you have sweats on, so it's cool. Maybe okay. if another person sat on the seat, right now, say a young lady came in here with uh, Daisy Dukes on. Oh yeah. Then immediately afterwards, then I'm gonna wash the sheets. Well, and, and then with the Daisy Dukes, the stories that come with it. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, hey man, you you becoming a you're a nasty man, man. But see, here's the thing. I'm not though. I you're be not. chilling. Dude, those stories, one girl talking about, I like when a, I'm just, I, I, I like when a man be hitting from the back and he, uh -huh. while, while reading the book of Revelations. I like when a man is stick his ear in my big toe and I, and I, and I, and I lick off the, the earwax. I be like, huh? But the thing is, like, okay, they be going, they be going, <laughs> hey, man, it, it be unreal when I be, I be watching your stuff. I be like, man. Yeah, but it be real life stuff. That's, I, that's the what I'm thing. saying. That's what I was asking about this seat that I'm sitting in. Am I good? You're good. Okay. You're All good, right. Q. Nothing, yeah. nothing um exposed has been in that seat. Well, you know what? Recently. Nas got a song called Dr. Not Boot. Like that's that's you, man. Like you you become you have a reputation, man, becoming you you the new Luke Skywalker for us, man. Uncle Luke. <laughs> Uncle Luke, I like Uncle that. Luke, yeah. See, and, and that's what I'm like kind of embracing because for the longest I'm like, I don't have a niche. But the thing that sticks is like you said, just people coming on and kind of expressing sexual dating and relationship stories and just you know scenarios yeah so and then it'd be real life scenarios because when you look at the comment section for these videos especially ones that have a lot of views the comment sections are flooded with people either agreeing or debating it so this is real life that we're talking about a lot of male bashing too like yeah someone one young lady talking about you know because ladies 
I'm going to take this from my episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. My man Larry do. David. Please do. It was, you know, the late, ladies love doing this. They love yeah. saying this, this. Yeah. He was small, he was small. Yeah. He said, what about them big-ass vagina women? What about this? Yeah. Yeah. What about that? We're going to start doing, y'all doing this, we're going to start doing that. What? Well, listen, I don't, I don't, yes, I had someone on here talk about how she had to dealt with a dude with a small opinion. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> but like you said, it's in life experiences. It is in I life experiences. And, I, and, and, I'll, and, and I'll be coming at, I don't be coming at women, but if something is shot towards women, we doing that too. Yeah. BBL shots have been taken on the show towards absolutely. women. I've rolled with it. Uh, the fact that women expect dudes to pay for them and pay for things and like it's a kind of like a prostitution and gold digging way of dating today. It absolutely it like, is. Like we bash, like I had a woman on here. Uh, shout out to Juju. <laughs> she got on a ass. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. we, and we went down that road. Okay. So it goes both ways. Okay. But since I have mostly women on, and mostly men come on, what I like to do is talk about situations and scenarios that involves a man so that the men tuning in can learn from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the women tuning in can get some insight from it as well, hearing it from a man's perspective towards that woman's story. Definitely entertaining. Um, and then we got to talk about like social studies. Like we need to look at a map because yeah, yeah some people on here That's who don't think it. Charlotte or North or Charlotte, North Carolina is considered the South. Yeah. Like, I don't know where the hell these people come from. Like, so we you, are in the southeast. Like if I say, yeah. where's Seattle? It's on the west coast, right? Right. It's in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. At the top, at the west, mm -hmm. right by Canada. Mm -hmm. If you Google uh, region of Charlotte or the region of North Carolina, it's going to say southeastern region. Yeah. The south. Yeah. I don't know what. They think we're in Pakistan, New York. I don't. I can't believe people don't think Charlotte is considered the south. Mm -hmm. So for those who are tuning in, uh, QCB is talking, referring to the episode where Lonnie. Uh, I told you I'm a fan. I've been watching. Yeah, she I said, watched it like I watched Martin. You know, the, I've been watching, and that's the greatest show ever. But the real was, she said, North Carolina is not the South, and then we went down this. You well, know, I go with Mary with children, but go ahead. Okay, we'll get into that. So, um, just a little backstory. Lonnie is from Mississippi. Okay. So, and I, she's not the first person I've heard say this. She's not the first person I've heard from, like, south of South Carolina to say that, like, North Carolina, like, they kind of try to, like, put y'all out the way saying y'all not really the South. That is, that's asinine. I think it is, too. They can now, if you go on Jeopardy mm -hmm. and they say uh, states is in the South, North Carolina is going to be in a category. Yeah. So, me being from Maryland, to to me, to me personally... Yes, Virginia is the South. Yes, Maryland is the South. We're both below the Mason and Dixon. Right. But to me, North Carolina is where the South. Virginia is technically the South, but it's kind of like, eh. North Carolina, to me, is where the South really starts. Right. right. I, I, you know what? I'll give you that. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. of course. And, and um, Charlotte is the city. Any city, of course, is going to be city-like. It's metro, I agree. You know, metro uh, area. They call us a mini Atlanta. Ex exactly. And Atlanta is more overrated than Equalizer 3. Yeah. But go ahead. That's why I chose to. I'm glad you did. It's just, I just can't believe Atlanta. It's, more, it's just so overrated. The traffic stinks. Yeah. Uh, if you're trying to go wherever, wherever rapper rap about, that's mm -hmm. what East Point, Decatur. Yeah. I'm like, how the hell y'all live down here? Yeah. But yeah. That, that's just me. But yeah, but like you were saying. But yeah, so she's from Mississippi and she was trying to say that North Carolina and Charlotte isn't really southern to some like tr like people that live below South Carolina. That's wow. what she was trying to say. But North Carolina is the South. But let me get your opinion on this. Yeah, I say that North Carolina is the South, but yeah. it's not the dirty South. I agree. I say the dirty South is Georgia and below. I agree. All See, right? I agree with all that. It's, it's no no big uh, confusion when it comes to that. Just you can't take North Carolina and put us out of the South. Nah. And then here's another thing: if we're not considered the South. What region are we in? Mm, we're not question. the Midwest. Right. That's Chicago. And the, we're not the Midwest. So what region are we in? They probably just say like East Coast, like people from like Mississippi and Louisiana. Right. Yeah, we get it. We still need to be in a region though. Yeah. So that's when, that's when school comes in. Yeah. That's when it's come in. That good CMS yes. education. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Harding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's when your ass is skipping school and being yeah. managed and fast. You want to you skip social studies and, and geography. You, absolutely. Yeah. So just to put that out there, man, I couldn't wait to come on this platform to say that right there that North Carolina is the damn South. I mean, yeah. I get one of the greatest rap albums ever is Goody Mob. You know, Soul Food. It was classic. Dirty South and all mm -hmm. that good stuff on there, and I get that part. But man, North Carolina's the damn South. Yeah. I just can't believe some people. But yeah, respectfully. It's the South. Yeah, and I love North Carolina, man. Yeah. Like, I lived out here back in, like, 02 to 04. 
Um, I love North Carolina. So what was it like? Okay, you were a Charlotte native. Yes. Born and raised. Yep. So what was it like growing up in Charlotte? Let's take it to, to square one. Well, it, it was super fun, man. We had so much stuff to do. Um, number one, all the rap music from up north, New York. Mm -hmm. we, do a, we do a lot of geography today. Mm -hmm. uh, up north, it, it for some reason came down here fast. You know, the birth of hip hop, it came down here fast. So we had the Big Daddy Kings, the um, Karis Ones, yeah. the Cool G Raps, the uh, Marley Marl, um, MC Light, um, uh, Roxanne Chante, like Biz Market. We had all that. When hip hop was born yeah. up north, uh -huh. I don't know why I got down here so fast. It yeah. trickled down to Charlotte real fast. Really? So we break dancing in the 80s. Wow. I remember break dancing and in the backyard, my oldest brother Sloan, he had the cardboard in the backyard with the box. Yeah. And we listening to um a jam moaning and all and planet rock and we got like 30 dudes in my backyard we back there break dancing i could never do a windmill but i could pop lock my ass off yeah we back there i look like lee from beach street you probably right. you was I, born like nine years ago so you know you don't know beach street everybody think breaking electric, electric. I've, seen, I've seen beach street it's, okay that's that's the best one wait is beach street the one with the when he with, with turbo no nah, that's breaking okay breaking that was the fun one. B Street was more street. Okay. That's when my man Rainbow died on the train tracks. And yeah, big, okay. And, yeah. yeah. And Biggie said the suicidal yeah. thoughts. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to die, die like on Rainbow, Rainbow, Rainbow on the train tracks. Well, I'm going to yeah. die on the train tracks like Rainbow yeah. and B Street. There okay. you go. Okay. There yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's right. Ready to die. Ball. Ball. Yeah, Come absolutely. <laughs> uh, suicidal thoughts. So, no. So it was fun, man. Of course, we had, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, G.I. Joe, and all that stuff. We eating cereal, going out playing all day. And then, um, we had a signature spots, you know, we had East Lamont, not hit no longer here. We had Freedom Mall, no longer here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had this store called Bala grocery store, uh, no longer here. So mm -hmm. we had some um some um some uh, real real like landmarks in yeah. Charlotte, man. You had the chicken coop, you had the prices, coffee cup. Yeah. I got to experience prices. As soon as I moved to Charlotte, they closed. I went to like my first you was week, able to get some? My first week I went to prices and then they closed. So okay. I, I I got to experience prices chicken. Price chicken coop was dope, but it was it was like a hundred people in line but three damn cash registers. Yeah. Three cash. And they only registers. took cash. That's it. And That's they it. only took cash. And they ain't let the black people touch the register. Ah. Cecil was like 80 years old. He'd uh. been there since the opening of Price's Chicken Coop. Uh. Now, Cecil, now listen, you can work here. You can, you can take the saran wrap and fold up on the chicken. You can put the, the masking tape on top of the boxes. Uh. You can fold the boxes. But your ass can't touch that damn cash register. Oh, they ain't let Cecil touch the cash register. Damn, Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> but we had so many landmarks, man. You yeah. know, Mr. K's, uh, Willie's, Willie CDs, Shazada Records. We had so much stuff, man. And when entertainers would come down, like back when uh, rappers would do their press run, they mm -hmm. get on these tours and just hit yeah. radio stations. Yeah. And they hit these music CDs. And you know what I'm saying? So I remember we used to stand in line to get CDs. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We don't do that no more. Nah. So. You know, but yeah, man, Charlotte was fun to grow up in, man. We had um everything. We had everything. We had our we had our side of the dope boys in the nineties. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um we had everything. It was dope. It was so dope. how you said when the hip hop scene first birthed in New York, it hit Charlotte quick. Yeah. Could that be because one thing I've noticed since living in Charlotte is there's so many New Yorkers out here. Was it like that back in the eighties as far as so many New Yorkers living in Charlotte? Well, you know, um, I, see, I'm not going to get on your show in front because I wouldn't know because in okay. the 80s, I'm like, um, you know, um, three years old until Let's I'm talk, like, look. no, I'm saying I grew up yeah. in the 80s. I mean, I'm an 80s baby. I mean, 87, I'm 11. Okay. So I, like I said, yeah, I was yeah, here. Yeah. So, you know, so I'm still here. I'm yeah. still here. I mean, I'm in the elementary and middle school in the yeah. 80s you know, crossed over to the 90s. So, yeah. no, nah, it wasn't that many. It wasn't that many, man. It was just the music here. Mm -hmm. And then with hip hop being so new, a lot of, it's a, um, you know, Power 98 is one of the stations that been here for so long. Yeah. Okay. We all said Kiss 102 jams. Uh -huh. We didn't have a Hot 97. Our Hot 97 was Power 98 and Kiss 102. And so they would play all the stuff from New York here. So, mm. nah, I didn't really start noticing that until maybe in my 20s, dude, that yeah. people, you know, coming down here and talking about how slow the South is would take your ass back up to New York. Yeah. Yeah. But they, but they didn't. Okay. And, it's, and it's so hard to find charlatans now. It is. I well, always. I don't know what the hell happened to us. I always tell people since I've been out, came out here March. I mean May fifth, twenty twenty one. I have met more New Yorkers than I have charlatans in Charlotte. Easily, easily. 
you have a better chance of finding a condom in Nick Cannon's wallet than you would finding a damn. I mean, what the? I don't know what happened to us. I tell people I'm from Charlotte. Really? Yes, really. Yeah. I'm from Charlotte. So what's your? And it don't make it seem like I ain't never traveled out of Charlotte. It's just my career been here. I was been no. blessed and for yeah. you try to make it seem like I ain't because you got some people who never leave their county. Sure, you they got just, some people who never leave their block. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you try to make it seem like what well, he's been here. No, I've traveled. Yeah. Um, so like what's your take on that? That Charlotte is a transplant city. <laughs> and why Charlotte? Like <laughs> why know, Charlotte? Because but... like Atlanta is Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. has its scene. Atlanta has its identity. Atlanta has its culture. Charlotte is kind of like a, it, 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 it's a chill vibe. Like it everyone is. I know from Charlotte is chill. They're out yeah. the way. Charlotte itself is kind of in like a chill landmark, chill spot. Why so many? Why is Charlotte such a transplant city for one? And how do you feel being a Charlottean about it being like one of the biggest transplant cities in the nation today? Well, first of all, look, number one, Charlotte's dope. That's number one. We yeah, dope. It is. All right. Uh, we get all four seasons, okay? And then eh, we, we clean, we green. So that go that damn um. So you see, the problem with you is number one, your name's misspelled. I right, shout out to uh, Miss N- Davon's mom, Miss Nixon. You, you, you misspelled your son's name. It's it's <laughs> your name is spelled D A I V O N. Right? What does that spell? Q Davion. No, it right? does not. <laughs> You are not about to sit up here and expose yourself for having a third grade lead a reading education. D A I. How oh do you my God. how do you spell how do you spell a plain bagel? A plain bagel. Plain bagel. Plain, as in plain bagel. How do you spell P-L-A-I-N. that? P L A I N. Okay. Right. That A I is a long A. My name D A I V O N. I just think you have a un like you know some some black people put you know we we give ourselves these unnecessary. Uh, hyphens and apostrophes and 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 in our names like you have a Maury Povich show guest name. Are you serious? You do. So you know it when is you, simple. You know when you watch Maury and they be like, he look that's that's my he, look. They got the same nose. Laquan Travius. Laquan The name the the name may be uh, Keisha and it's spelled K E Y hyphen. S S H I A. I get that. I get you know that. what I'm saying? That's what your mom did to your name. No, it is did. very simple because if that I was a Y, you would not be saying this. The only reason you're saying that is because I realized that. Well, first off, I haven't you, had your name is pronounced. No, 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 no. You, you want to talk about education and yes. CMS, which for those who tune in, that's the Charlotte <laughs> Mecklenburg School System. You want to talk about CMS education? Yes, yes. My name hasn't been hasn't been as screwed up as it has since I moved to Charlotte. Nobody in Charlotte pronounces my name minute. right. Since you got down here, you've that, heard more people say your Davion, name wrong. Davion, yes. So does that say something about the Charlotte public education system? Yes, as we recognize how correctly to pronounce names. My no, the thing is, how it, you pronounce your name, Davon, because it's spelled D A I V O N. The thing is, it triggers a micro dyslexic yeah, function. I'm that v. Yeah, people switch it. When you look at it fast, <laughs> you switch it automatically. That's all that happens. But you want to know what something? That's the reason I name my brand day by day because yes. my whole life people have been screwing up my name. Right. So I was like, that's you not know, your mom's fault. No. I love that she named me Davon, and I love that <laughs> and she... And I saw on FaceTime, she's yeah. sweet, but we got to talk about her your I name. I love how she spelled it. You want to know how she uh, even got my name? How she get your so name? So her middle name is Davina. Okay. And people think it's from that, but it's not. Okay. Because my grandfather's name is David. That's where Davina came from. But okay, she got yeah. Davon because when she was a teenager, she was in New York City. She, okay. y'all, y'all the same age. So she was a teenager in the yeah. 90s. She was in New York City, and... Um, she was, she ran it. My mother, she was all over the place. She God couldn't sit still. She chilling, That's why yeah, I'm the way chilling. I am. Yeah, she, you, you know, be, she couldn't sit still. I'm yeah. all over the place. So she was in New York City with some friends and she was, she ran into this little, little kid on the street, this little boy on the street. And she asked him his name and he said, Davon. And she fell in love with that name. It was like, I'm going to name my son Davon. Okay. So that's where that came from. All right, that's a dope. I thought she named it after Dasani Water, like Dasani, and took the I and moved it with the S. There is zero correlation between Day and Dasani. Okay. But anyway, so um, (laughs) back to how you feel about Charlotte being one of the biggest transplant cities in the nation I think it's dope. And he said, listen, our winters, we escape winter sometime, Okay. And to me, Charlotte's winter, and I always want to apologize to the people of North when I say this statement right. I'm going to preface it by saying it. 
Um, I apologize. Well, I like Charlotte's winters because number one, it gets cold just enough for me. I had to bring up my little thin sweaters, my scars, my toboggans. Yes, I still say toboggans. My jackets. Scully. Right, I don't say scullies. It's not like you're going to rob somebody. All right. But listen, um, you listen to too much rap music. <laughs> uh, but listen, because and then we overreact. When they get 40 degrees down here, you seen it, the news, you can't deal. watch the game because all this shit going across it's the screen, yeah. school closings, they got the Doppler right on the right yeah. of the screen, I can't Literally. see the damn score, Literally. and I know we overreact, and then if it do snow, it's going to stay on the ground for mm, about six hours, Y'all and it's gone. terrible I with agree. that. I recognize that. It's so simple. You you prepare <laughs> by laying out salt, get the salt trucks, drive, we lay ain't out got salt. It. We got one... <laughs> We don't have no salt trucks. We got one by somebody who has a drunk uncle who drives a Ford F one fifty, and he's riding around the streets of Charlotte pouring Morton salt through the damn streets. We ain't got no damn salt. I never had to shove a driveway. I never had to get out what? in the morning and go crank my car for an hour. Yeah. Go back and get dressed. I never had the uh, a snow. What the hell is a snowblower? I don't know what a damn snow a snowblower. It's like a white girl who does coke. A snowblower. I don't know what the hell is a snowblower. I've never seen none of this stuff. That's why I like Charlotte, man. We barely, we barely get a winter. And it's, I'm a Christmas year-round guy. You are. It's February, and the average temperature has been 60 degrees. <laughs> right. I have, I, I, since moving to Charlotte, not once have I been able to use my winter coat. Not That's once. That's what I'm telling you. But remember two years ago when it was snowing for like three weeks straight? Yeah. That was that was the the only like true winter experience I've experienced in Charlotte. Yeah, it, like, it, it really happens, man. Yeah, that was the only time, and it was bad because I had to drive home like in the middle of it. It was a little bit of snow, but the fact that there was no preparation for the snow. Yeah, we don't uh, we don't have that. It, it was terrible. That's why they close stuff down, and and people don't go to work. They don't they don't go to school. You can't get out your damn neighborhood. We don't know how to drive in it. Mm. So is one of the reasons why it's so rare to meet Charlotteans. I mean, this is just, I think, common sense is because there's so many people moving to Charlotte that's yeah. not from Charlotte, which inevitably causes the prices to rise, which are moving natural Charlotteans like out of the city limits, if you would. Maybe they have to move to like Huntersville or Fort Mill or, you know, Mount Holly, whatever. It may but don't sound like Charlotteans are a bunch of punks and we scared and got to no. get up out of here. No, no, no. They've been a little damn disrespect. No. Well, the thing is, I, what I was getting to was gentrification. It happens in every city. It's not just right. Charlotte. Right. Me being from Maryland, I've seen it in D.C. and Baltimore. Both. It's And that's not calling... That's not, I would be damned if I call anyone from, or if I'd be damned if I called a city of D.C. or Baltimore punks because it, gentrification hit it. All I'm just saying is I was leading to, you know, that's like happening in a lot of cities and Charlotte's just next up on the list. Gentrification is inevitable with these big major cities. I just don't know where the Charlatans go. I don't know where they go. I just, it, 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 it baffles me that... It's less of us. Yeah. Like, I don't know where I don't know where we go. Yeah. I mean, are we getting too successful? Are we moving? Or like what you said is gentrification. We're going to Huntersville. Gentrification Q. What I say? Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Here we go with this 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 CMS Mecl Mecklenburg <laughs> public education system. Oh man. Good lord. First of all, I went to DC. I didn't know. First of all, I went to DC. Mm -hmm. I didn't know DC was that damn people are mean in DC and it's dirty up there. Well, it looked like Detroit. I thought I was in that movie. Uh, uh, eight Mile? No, nah, not Eight Mile. No, nah, it's the other movie. The guy was, uh, he was blind, but he'll kill you. The white dude. Come on, oh, man. Oh, oh, well, they were in his house. They were in his house. Not a quiet place. It was the other I, I know what you're talking about. Don't that. breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah, he yeah, was in yeah. Bad was in I Detroit. didn't know D.C. I'm like, what the hell's? I mean, because I went to, you know, the, the, the Washington Monument, that stuff, you get goosebumps because, you know, you're seeing all the, yeah. you don't see documentaries, yeah. movies, or yeah. you see Washington, yeah. Pennsylvania yeah. Ave and all that. Yeah, but then you go to the other side. I was like, man, what the hell? I, I thought I was like, you ever seen Stranger? Just a, just a block away. Well, yeah, I saw Stranger Things uh -huh. on Netflix. I said, uh -huh. damn, this was what a damn upside down world is. The yeah. portal uh -huh. is through down D.C. Just a block it, away from the it White was, House. It was terrible. It was terrible. But anyway, but, um, well, it's and I didn't know y'all was that close. I've always heard the DMV uh -huh. is close like oh, that. Oh, like how DC and Man, Baltimore what, and you Maryland. You go down the street. And you in Baltimore, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how close y'all are. Because we got Matthews, Concord, right. Rock Hill. It's a nice Man, little drive. Y'all are spots. close, yeah. close, dude. And it's crazy because DC, Maryland, and Baltimore, which are three different places. Um, and only say that because people say DMV. But yeah. pe people, like, I say DMV when I'm outside of the DMV. Like, when I'm in North Carolina, they ask where I'm from, I say I'm from Maryland or maybe the DMV, just to give perspective. But nobody from the DMV actually says DMV. Okay, okay. All like, right. just throw that out there. But it's crazy how you have D.C., Maryland, 
and then Baltimore and Maryland in between DC it's, and, it's and Baltimore. Unreal, dude. I and it's, y'all are. you can you can get to all three within forty five minutes. But I, but at the same time, such different cultures. Right. So DC from Baltimore to Maryland, such well, different cultures. I got cultures. family in East Baltimore. My my cousin of James and Ron Hart. He went to um, Dunbar High School with Muggsy Bogues back mm-hmm. in the day. So I got family up there. Yeah. They say that's what those when Dunbar was Dunbar. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's different cultures. But just to go back to how you said like people were mean and you know the DC area. It was crazy. I said, "Why y'all so damn mean up here?" Well, that's a reason why so many Northerners, including myself, even though yes, Maryland is south of the Mason Dixon line, moved to Charlotte to get that Southern hospitality. Yeah. I call it Northern hostility. I think once you get above Virginia and even like Northern Virginia and above, it's Northern hostility. You know what I'm saying? Like the Southern hospitality, it legit took me a year to get used to how people speak, how people, you know, are really concerned about how yeah, you're doing. Yeah, I saw you talking about that too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real thing. We're, we're just not used to it. So when someone like yourself that is someone from Southern hospitality goes up there, it's just, you're not, I don't know. It's one, it's so many people. And two, you kind of think someone's trying to backdoor you when you're like extra friendly. So they're just, they kind of turn like a weird eye towards it. I don't know. That's not being a good human being. That's been a psycho. Because I'm saying, how you doing? And I'm mm-hmm. opening the door for you. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Well, I get it. That's yeah. why I, that's why I moved out here. I get I, it. I'm glad you're down here, man. Yeah, I get it. Um, real quick, have you caught any episodes from the new Kirby Enthusiasm season? No, I haven't. And um, because I got so much stuff I be watching, man. And, yeah. and Larry David, my guy. So I get excited that I, I haven't seen it yet because I know it's coming. And I'm letting it's the here. episodes build up. Oh, good idea. You know what I'm saying? That way you can binge them. Yeah, because Max, HBO Max, they put them out. Because uh, I'm, I'm on True Detective. I'm watching Fool Me Once. I'm watching. I finished Griselda. Like, I'm all over the place, yeah, man. I'm all okay. over the place. So, and, I, and I watch It's a Wonderful Life once a month. So I got so much stuff I'm, What's, I'm watching. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, the What's Christmas. That? George Bailey. Bedford Falls. All right. The so, guy so, was going to kill himself, and then the angel comes down, Clarence, and helps him. Remember the end of the movie? Look, Dad, teacher says when a bell rings, that means an angel gets his wings. You no. Wow. So it's a Christmas so, movie. So during December, what you watch is New Jack City and Power all the time? I like Friday After Next. Come on, man. We're talking about real I Christmas like movies, man. Bad Santa. No, I'm talking about like Home Alone, uh, It's a Wonderful Life, A Christmas Story, Ralphie, Ho, 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 Old Fudge, uh, Fred Claus, um, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. The I've, watched, 30... I've watched The Grinch. Okay, which one? The, the Jim Carrey one or the original? Well, both. In elementary school, we used to watch the cartoon. There we go. All right, yeah, that's but, what I'm on. But as an adult, uh, Christmas time is a tradition for me personally, Friday After Next and Bad Santa. I just don't know what people get out. And I might even I might even get a little frisky and watch Bad Santa too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, okay, so fun, man. you're you're a show connoisseur. Yes, yes. But we both have a love for Kirby enthusiasm. Yes, 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 yeah. All right, so let's do this. What's up? First off, yeah, all right now. Let's do this. What are the top five white TV shows that black people watch? Damn that's, damn, that's a good question. Um, and I, and I'm gonna say them, and then because some black people don't want to admit to them, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna say them. Okay, they, they don't have to be in any order. We can work. We can tag okay. team this. Let's so tag like, team. Okay, this. Modern Family. Modern Family. Okay, that's a good one. I think we'll see if it stays in. That's a good right. one. I think I've definitely watched a, a right. few seasons. Are we of talking family. about like, like you know reruns, or whatever? Just yeah, yeah, say, yeah, Okay, yeah. Modern Family. Kirby enthusiasm has to be in there. I don't know if a lot of black people watch Curb. Like, yeah, you're the I'm, only one I know that watch it besides me. Yeah, you're right. right? A lot of people, black people don't. They don't. Like, they don't. Yeah, like so a lot of black people don't. I will like. say Friends. Black people ain't watch Friends. Man, my sister called me. She called me, and she called me crying. I said, Tremaine, I said, what's going on? He he got off the plane. I said, what? I ain't know what she was talking She was uh-huh. crying hysterically, like uh-huh. crying. Like, you know, like when I would break up with a girl back yeah, in the day. Yeah. I mean, crying. I was like, what's going she on with you? She broke up with you, but go ahead. And he got off the plane. I said, who got off the plane? What's wrong? Uh, I th- Ross got off the plane because I knew all week the Friends final episode of the um, not the season but the uh, finale uh-huh. series finale uh-huh. I knew it was going to be played that night uh-huh. and I said you talking about this Friends shit yeah. I hung up on them <laughs> so I'm just saying so I think I'll, okay. I've never watched Friends you know watch Friends black people don't watch Friends Q Married Children Okay, I think that was the that was the joint with what's his name, right? Al Bundy. Al Bundy. Okay, so married children. That was old school. Modern Family. Okay, I think we watched uh, Who's the Boss. 
Uh, we'll, we'll wait on that. Okay. One. We got to put the office in there, though. The office? Okay, so. And Golden Girls. Q, what the fuck? <laughs> Golden <laughs> Girls. Me, dude. Hey, dude. Okay, well, y'all tell me. I know that thing. Y'all song. tuning in. I, I mean, I know what Thank the Golden you Girls is. for being a friend. I know what Golden Girls is, what? but black people ain't watch no goddamn what you Golden mean, Girls. They watch no, everybody watch Golden Girls, they dude. They did? Okay. Hell yeah. Well, you I wouldn't know. know. I wouldn't you, know. You, you, you knew uh, Ma? She, was, she used to cut a rug. She was a. I've never watched it, but she I know was, who Betty White is. Every, every, not, no, every sitcom has uh -huh. someone who had a smart ass mouth. Mm -hmm. What's happening? D had a smart ass mouth, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and Golden Girls, it was Ma. It was Ma. It was Dorothy's mama, okay. Estelle Getty. Okay. Betty White was the, every sitcom had a, somebody who was quote unquote, not so smart. Cole mm -hmm. on Martin. Yeah. Um, Kelly Bundy, a married J children. Junior from My Wife and Kids. Exactly. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So, in, in 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 the Golden Girls case, it was Betty White. Okay. It was I'm, gonna let, White. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let those tuning in decide this. So we got the five: Golden Girls, uh huh, Martin Family, uh huh, um, Married the, Children, The Office. The okay, Golden Girls, Martin Family, The Office. Uh huh. All right. Now, do you give me um, Married Children with Al Bundy? Yeah, I'll give you that one. Wait Who? a minute. Wait a minute. I think I'm. Wait, wait a minute. Golden Girls. Yeah. Are you you're gonna give me Golden Girls? I'll give you Golden Girls. All right, what's the, the Office? The Office. That's two. Yep. Modern Family. Modern Family. Married with Children. Married with Children. And you tried to say something that was the fifth. But you don't want to put Golden Girls in there? No, it was another one. Who's the boss? Yeah, we're not doing Who's the what Boss. What about Home Improvement? No. I, I I gotta I gotta throw this one in there. You, 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 have put, some old school you don't want to put Friends. No, black okay. people ain't watch Friends. Let me put this one in there. Black <laughs> uh, people had black we people. We watched Living Single. Living Single. There you go. Uh, which I actually heard. Friends copied off a of living yeah, single, but that's another conversation yeah, for another day. We need one more white show though. Family Guy. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. Family I can rock. Guy. Okay, I'll rock with that. Family Guy. Okay. But I couldn't. I couldn't watch Boondocks. Boondocks. Oh shows my back. god. Boondock. That's... People want to take my black card, man. Boondocks. Okay, then let's do back. this. Okay, then let's do this. Top shows in general. Oh shit. Of all time, you're gonna ask me to leave. Top five shows and in, in shows. You're gonna in ask general me to time. leave because you just said you don't watch Boondocks, and we'll each have our I own. I, we'll each have our own. So go ahead, go ahead, because you Lord. just said you couldn't watch Boondocks. I Boondocks can't. is literally one of the great. It's the black version of The Simpsons, literally. I just couldn't watch it, man. With as the... far as how many things came to fruition off of that show, but go ahead. And you know Regina, she Regina played Huey King. and Riley. Yeah, she played not Huey Regina and Riley. Hall, Regina King. Yeah, multiple characters, right? right. You, okay. Huey and Riley. Okay, I don't know who they are. I don't yeah. know. I mean, and, and, and Serena, R Venus and Serena. I don't know what they're talking about. And R. R. P. to John Witherspoon, who was granddad. Okay, go ahead. Because okay. you said you ain't watched Boondocks. Top five shows, shows in general. Time. Go ahead. I Mary with Children. Mm -hmm. I of course you got to put Martin on there. Mm -hmm. That's two. Top five shows in general, across the board. <laughs> Frasier. Never watched it, but okay. <laughs> the fuck is Frasier? <laughs> Frasier may be the best spinoff sitcom of all time. Okay. You know, because you know the Jeffersons was a spinoff of All in the Family. Because I think um, uh, Florida Evans, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Wheezy. Wheezy is from the Jeffersons. Florida's from uh, Good Times. Okay, because one of them was the neighbors to All in the Family. I'm getting them kind of mixed up. Okay, so where I'm at. All right, married children, uh -huh. Martin. Uh -huh. Was it what I you just said? Frazier. Frazier. Uh huh. Sanford and Son. Good choice. Damn, one more. One That's more. tough, dude. Um, married children, Frazier, mm -hmm. Sanford and Son, Martin. Martin, and uh, one more TV show that I like. Um, <sighs> I guess I throw Curb in there right now. Oh no, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. That's, That's a good my, choice. That's my Seinfeld. Five. Was That's good. my five. Seinfeld it was, was so many quotables. Came we could have so put Seinfeld in the in the list of white shows. Well, I don't know. I don't know what watch. you was doing up there, man. I don't know what you was up there doing. <laughs> you was going to the DMV. You, I don't know what the hell you was doing. I watched Seinfeld. You Seinfeld, watched Seinfeld. Seinfeld is good. So many black people of love Seinfeld. Okay, black right. people love Seinfeld. Right, so that's my five until right until Kramer got on that stage and talked. Yeah, that, yeah, he dropped, that. he dropped more in bombs than uh, uh, Paula Dean did. Yeah, he, he was, was wilding crazy. out. He was wilding out. That's but we forgave him. Yeah, did you forgive him? We. Did you forgive Kramer for I know Kramer was almost like a top five? I know this was Europe. He's talking TV, about some we TV character of all time. He's probably a top five TV character of all time. He was. I, I'd put a Quagmire over Kramer as far as neighbors, <laughs> but Quagmire was awesome. Okay, my top five shows of all time. Give me Martin number one. Yes. The Office number two. Okay. The Boondocks number three. Right. Kirby Enthusiasm number four. All right. That's a tough list, man. And for us to come off the top of the dome, that's a tough list. You got one more. Cheers. 
I'm gonna put Eastbound and Down at number five. Okay, I like Eastbound and I like Eastbound and Down. That my is, girl, my girl put me on the Office though. By the way, do you my like girl, it? Yeah, you like it, The Office? Yeah, it was good. This guy liked it because it was kind of the way the camera was and how they did the. It wasn't a live studio audience and all exactly. that. Kind of my year Parks and Rec. I didn't yeah. watch Parks, but I knew of Parks well, and they, Rec. They copied. I'm talking about far as like the camera. Yeah, angle. yeah, yeah. And you know, The Office is from um like the UK. England. Yeah, England, okay, London, whatever the difference. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah. Um, so The Office is like people either love it or hate it. Right. People either get it or don't. It's yeah. what they call dry white humor or whatever. I, it's sarcasm. The yeah. office is filled with, and I love sarcasm. Like, well, there's no such thing as white humor. It's not? No. I mean, I've been doing You have comedy. white jokes, Q. I've been doing comedy since 2001. It's you no have such white thing jokes. As, you, have, you, know, you just know your audience. Like, if I uh, go do an all-white crowd, mm -hmm. and I could kill it, and then do an all-black crowd Friday, my material may change you, you, a little bit. You just have to know your audience. If I do an all-white mm. crowd... And I got a joke about Gucci, man. They ain't gonna know. They ain't gonna know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. So how do you typically go about working a white crowd versus black? Well, it's just when I when I get to the venue, I, you know, you look at the crowd. Say, okay, I know what I'm gonna do here. Okay. You know, if it's if it's two black people in the audience, I know I know how to go out there and say, damn, where are all the black people at? I gotta play that game. I spy brother. Uh, okay, that's that's one. Uh, okay, that's two. I forgot to mention this. Q does stand up. Com He's a stand up comedian as well. You didn't put that in my damn intro. I did. I'm sorry. Okay, stand up comedian and as I'd well. Like you know, just a couple jokes. Should I do. we start the whole thing over? Start the whole episode. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> it is a couple things I do to break the ice. You know, I'm like, damn, I feel like a raisin in a bowl of milk in here. Yeah. Well, also yeah, my brother I Sloan. My brother Sloan gave me that one because he a comic. Raisin too. in a bowl of milk. That's yeah, a good one. Yeah. Well. I'll how I said I wouldn't be as far like today in Charlotte, you were the first person that took me to the Comedy Zone because you gave yeah. me free tickets to one of your shows. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time in the That's Comedy right. Zone. Yeah. Rewind two years later, I did a, uh, you know, I did, the, I had, I had a the, segment at the Comedy yeah, Zone during the live podcast. And I didn't get an invite from you. I definitely gave you an invite, Q. <laughs> I, I gave you free tickets to come to the Comedy Zone to see me Q, I on told stage. You, I told you what to get. But you told me. But I you told you to me. come. I said, Q, if you with me, I can get you in there. I said it, Q, because I remember. Now you acting like Stan from Martin. Q, don't know. Don't Martin do that. Martin grabbed these mops and meet me in the back when he was trying to go see Varnell Hill. Now you're doing me like that. Q, I told Stan, you. No. I got the mops. Sean, I got the, I got yeah, the mops. Yeah. <laughs> Q, no, I remember because we were at the gym. I said, Q, if you come with me, you're good. I'll get you in there. I remember vividly, Q. I, okay, I, I'll feel you, man. Hey, hey, if you say you did, hey, I, I got you, man. You you but did. anyway, we were talking about yeah. you working uh, white crowd versus black crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comedy. yeah. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Something, something I thought of because we're yeah. doing a lot of white versus black in a good way, in a healthy way here. Um, so if but I'm not racist. I mean, not at all. Hold on. I, I'm, I, I mean, I got said, on a white shirt. I just so I'm not said racist. in a good, healthy way. Right, 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 right. Like this sensitive ass world. Like this. This is another oh, thing man. I love about Day by Day podcast. I'm not cutting no corners on here, bro. Oh, we damn sure know that. I'm. <laughs> You're a nasty bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this is yo know, day by day is now all about it, it, it's like Maury. Maury himself was a cool collective he was host, he was. but his show was ratchet. That's all well not Maury, Jerry Springer. I'm sorry. Jerry Springer was cool, calm and collective, very lovable dude he was. amongst all he was respected. I agree with that. I agree with that. But his show had some rashness to it. He, That's what day by day is. And Maury Maury was too. Hey, Maury too. Then he found his niche. Damn. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. And man, it, it was on. Exactly. That's all I'm doing with him Day by Day. Connie, you know his wife, Connie Chung? Mm -mm. Yeah, his wife, Connie Chung. Chung, is that Asian? I think I, mean, I, I think so. I mean, I know Charlotte's in the South, but I don't know what, you know, she I mean, may be Chung. Asian. C-H-U-N-G, Chung. That That's... could be anything. That, what black or white Your person? name Nixon, you could be a damn Ethiopian or something. I don't know. Are you... Chung, I think, what? I mean, I don't know. She, she could be Asian, she could be Chinese, she could be Japanese. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, do you know who Connie Chung is? No. <laughs> I can't even forget you was born like nine years ago. I was born in 94, baby. Shoot. 94 was the you, best year you know, for hip hop. You know what you missed? Well, I was born in it. You know what you missed? No, though? because when I, I, I remember back to four and five years old. So I, Damn, I remember dude. the tail end of greatness. I you remember missed the tail all end of those John Hughes movies. You missed 16 Candles. You missed Pretty in Pink. Who's John Hughes? John Hughes. Who's John Hughes? Dude, he wrote, he wrote, he wrote Home Alone. Oh, he wrote uh, National Lampoon's Vacation with Chevy Chase, The Griswolds. Never he wrote it. Pretty in Pink. Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club, I've seen. Bre 16 I love Breakfast Candles. Club. Never seen Candles. The Great Outdoors. I love I'm talking Breakfast about, you remember Club. Fat John Candy back in the AC? 
all this 80s stuff you missed, man. You missed the birth of Madonna. The birth, you missed so much. Oh, oh. I would have liked Madonna. Right. Yeah. You missed so much stuff, dude. Hey, John Hughes, Uncle Buck. You know the movie Uncle Buck? Nah. Damn. I know, I, I know Joe Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you this. Let me ask, let me ask you something. Black people um, should be ashamed of themselves because we contradict. We pick when we want to use the race car. And you shouldn't do that. What do you mean by that? Okay. This whole Confederate flag thing that happened about four or five years ago when it was 10 on these statues. Yeah, I remember that. You know, when America went, they, they went nuts. Yeah. If they found any statue in your city that had anything to do with the Army general or the Confederate, yeah. they would tear it down. Right. You remember the TV show Dukes of Hazard? Yeah. Just a good old Waylon Jennings sung the theme song. Uh -huh. One of the most famous theme songs Ever but up there with Jefferson. You dance, yeah. you know it. Yeah. You just a good old boy. Roscoe, Pico, Train, Boss Hog. Uh-huh. Luke and Bo Duke, Uncle Jesse, that damn fine ass Daisy Duke. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. They car. It was called the General Lee. Mm -hmm. It was orange. It was dope as hell. That yeah. zero one uh -huh. on top of the damn roof, roof of it. It was a Confederate flag. Right. Mm. Black people loved it. Ah. We had General Lee pajamas. We had General Lee bed sheets. We had General Lee lunch boxes going to school with the General Lee logo on on the damn the mug inside your lunch. Yeah. It's old school. You like you was born like nine years ago. We had we had the General Lee race tracks, General Lee everything. Uh -huh. Everybody watched Dukes of Hazard. When well, just white people watching it. Yeah, we watched it every I think Sunday night whenever it came on. That's where Daisy Dukes came from. That's what I'm telling you. The term you. Daisy Dukes, short that's ass shorts, came from Dukes that's of Hazard. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Uh. So black people, y'all gotta kind of calm it down with the whole. You well, know, you gotta. Just, well, I'm just well, saying though, because at that time get, you was accepted. But that was a very 2020 was a very emotional emotional time. I know behind. And, I know what behind you know, all the that was a very emotional time because we were dealing with. You know, a high level of racism and police brutality Absolutely. on top of COVID nineteen. I'm with you. People were very irritable. You know, that was a very sensitive and emotional time. So I was like to bring the asses back down to earth because you, because you're full of it. Well, were they full of it? Well, maybe, hey, they, yeah. maybe. Well, maybe they just didn't realize until then. One thing I didn't like about 2020 when they were doing the statues and all that. That's cool. That's cute. Yeah, bro. In D.C. to this day, the FBI building is called the J. Edgar Hoover building. Right. J. Edgar Hoover was the devil. Right. His number one task was to eliminate, no, 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 annihilate the yeah. Black Panther Party. Right. Who was a nonviolent organization. Absolutely. They was they afraid just... of the Black Panther Party. Because <laughs> the Black Panther Party was there for us to uh, protect us. To protect the... us. Absolutely. I'm with you. And the, I'm with you. I mean, and I'm they like... couldn't do everybody. They couldn't get everybody, but we did, they did do a lot. I know we got yeah. a long way to go, and I get it, man. Yeah. This one girl said it best. She was like, when the height of the um, Black Lives Movement matter mm -hmm. and all that stuff, she was like, could you imagine all the races at the table, the white people and the black people, and we play a Monopoly, mm -hmm. and white people go 400 times. Around the board. Imagine playing Monopoly, and they go around the board 400 times. They say, okay, Davon, yo go. You take the dice and roll it. Mm -hmm. They have been around the board 400 times. 400. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the first thing you land on, you got to pay. Now you in debt. You got to go around that board, each spot of debt. Don't land on Park Place. That's your ass. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Keep going. Railroad. Money, 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 money. Get you $200. And then you go around again. Like, they had a four, 400 times around the board of Monopoly. 400. Mm. That's a, one of the best analogies I've ever heard. Mm. I'm that, Nah, that's a great analogy. It is. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I never played Monopoly. So, I'm a... hey man, somebody take my damn mic off, man. You never played Monopoly. <laughs> so I mean, I get it, I get it, cause I know. What the hell was you doing with your damn <laughs> Cabbage Patch Kids or playing jacks? What the hell was you doing? How you don't never? I think Monopoly's a, a long, played, ass, boring game now. But I played Crash Bandicoot and Grand Theft Auto Three growing up. No, no, I get the. I, we, we ain't got the video games. Okay, I'm talking about board games. Oh, everybody I played, played Monopoly. I played. Um, you never played Mon. Did you play it in life? You just you just never touched Monopoly. Never played it. Wow. I played Shoots and Ladders. I played Candyland. <laughs> I played. You never played Monopoly. Twister. You don't know about Community Chess. 
and the damn what's the other car name? Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know about. about go to jail. Go yeah. to jail. Free parking. And get we, out of jail. We for take free. the money and put up under the free parking. So we landed you in yeah. community chest. I forgot. Never played Monopoly. I played a lot of Connect Four. Um, do you do you know what the Price is Right is? Yeah, the TV show. That's a racist ass TV show. Because every time a black person around, that's price wrong as hell. That price, yeah, they just, I count how many black people win the Price is Right in a week. Maybe two will win. Maybe two. Oh, maybe two. But anyway, I, I just don't give me a song the Price is Right. Um, do you play spades? I play spades. Tunk? I know of Tunk, but okay. I don't play Tunk. If you Tunk out, you pay double. But let me ask you this. Out here, do y'all shoot craps or play CeeLo? No, man. This ain't the damn... No. What? No. Y'all don't shoot dice out here? No, I don't shoot dice. This ain't no damn rap <laughs> video. I ain't shooting dice. <laughs> but you... We'll sing it. Shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them. We'll sing it. We ain't playing no damn shoot dice. Yeah. It's a, it's a two or three dice. <laughs> And we don't drink 40 ounces either. You, I've def, bro. No, I've definitely no, seen I'm some just 40 saying, ounces. But I'm just, I, I, <laughs> listen, I'm the back of the day, but we ain't out here shooting no damn dice. Okay. <laughs> well, well, listen, speaking of gambling in North Carolina, <laughs> yeah. DraftKings and FanDuel yes. is coming to North Carolina. Yes, that man, March, is insane. March 11th. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I, I endorse, so shout out to DraftKings. I endorse Dry Kings on my show, man. Mm. Live with the QCB. Mondays and Fridays, 4 to 6. You can check me out on FoxSportsRadioShaw.com. Click listen live and check me out, man. But yeah, I endorse Drive Kings. I don't know when this is out yet, but March 11th is the day it comes out. Yep. Or it came out this past March 11th. Yep. And man, people are going gambling crazy. Now be careful. Be careful. If you're in a relationship, let your significant other know, hey, babe, I'm a, and we can, and you got a joint account, don't let her sell them damn Drive, baby. Who the, who the hell is Drive Kings? Yeah, see them, see them transactions. Who the fuck is Drive Kings? It's yeah. all these transactions. Yeah, because Drive Kings coming, fan, fan deal, deal coming. coming. Yeah, it's a lot coming, man. So you got to be careful if you're gonna start getting that. Because some people are new to gambling, and they just see the shit on TV. Now this ain't the casino with Robert De Niro or nothing like that. You got to be careful, man. Because next thing you know, you lose. You want to get right back in it. You got to be careful. And now. it's a cycle. See, yes. the thing is, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you how it works. Because I was in Maryland when they wrote it out in Maryland two years ago. I'll okay. tell you exactly how this works, Q. First of all, everyone chases that big ticket. They right. see people on social media hit, you know, a hundred dollar parlay for a hundred thousand dollar reward. Yeah. They like, okay, it's doable, and they keep chasing it. Now, what happens is they keep losing, and they're like, damn, I'm two hundred dollars in a hole. So what do they do? Okay, let me place this twenty dollar ticket to get that two hundred dollars back and I'll be back even. So what happens? They lose that 20 and it just keeps going. They keep right. losing because they're trying to get back to that hole that it started with. Right. That's where the cycle happens. And then for two, everyone tries to get to their big ticket. Now, let's say you do hit the big ticket. Okay. Let's say you do hit a $10,000 parlay. You spent $15,000 just trying to get to it in the first place. Yeah. And also, you think when people hit a $10,000 parlay that they're going to stop? No, because what's their mind process? Oh, I hit it once, I can hit it again. Absolutely. Let me tell you how this is going to go, okay. right? <laughs> I was in Maryland two years ago when they rolled out FanDuel on the, on, in person and online to people back home. Okay. First, we got the casinos. Okay. They put them in person in the casinos. Maryland Live, shout out to Maryland Live. I spent 12 hours there once on the bowl season. Damn. 12 hours. Um, it was you told me before like you used to have pay your bills because you used to you had a pretty good no this is when I was living in Charlotte okay I was back home for the holidays okay I was at live I was at live casino for twelve hours in the sports book once hours. twelve hours but see it's it's such a rush yeah that's, that's what, what I'm saying, saying. Yeah, yeah. so this is how it's going to go right they're going to roll out the app with a lot of promotions and deals and freebies free wins it'll be like. Uh, bet an NBA game, bet that this team scores one point. A guarantee that you'll win, right? Right, right, right. right. Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl, he'll get 0 0.5 passing yards. Exactly. Right. Right. So what you do is they lay out them freebies, they lay out them discounts, yeah. <laughs> and people win off bucks. People, they're, they're handing out money okay. at okay. that point, right? Yeah. Every business has a marketing budget. Of course. So that's their marketing budget. That's okay. all it is. So you win the money. You're like, oh, okay, bet. Then the first few bets are kind of sweet. You're going to win a few parlays to begin with. Yeah. You're like, this is sweet. I can do this. I'm about to take FanDuel for all they got. <laughs> so you start making parlays. They start adding up. You start winning some. I'm going to tell you this. Some people are even going to leave their jobs. 
some people are going to leave their nine to five to proceed a career as a professional sports gambler. They're going to they're going to think they're same roster or something. Trouble, man. I'm telling you, this is how it's going to go. So then, boom, I believe, I they're believe. starting to win. They're starting to win. And then that's when the shit hits the fan. Damn. That's when reality that's kicks in. Ass. That's when the lose by one leg parlays start to happen. And they start losing it. They're like, okay, but I'm, I'm 10000 up. I lost 5000 So what? I'm going to make it back with this $1,000 parlay. They place it. They lose that. They do it again four more times. Now they're back to ground zero. Damn. So they're like, okay, I got to get back to that $10,000 high feeling. So let me place these parlays to get back to it. And they lose it all. So now they're $10,000 in the hole. Now they're asking their family for money. Now they're they're constantly on their phone looking at games, yep. looking at the live tracker of games. They're at the mall. Damn, when you at the mall, when you at the beach and you see people on their phone just spaz out, that's because they're looking at their parlays. They're checking the games and they're seeing that they're fucked see, up. If he got if he got seven rebounds or less than seven rebounds. Bro, someone has five rebounds and needs seven. Oh my god. They're at their daughter's birthday party <laughs> on their phone glued. And they're just spazzing out like, you asshole, come on. Bro, my cousin, shout out to my cousin, I'm not going to put him out there. Yeah. He he had a bad habit at one point. We're at the movie theater, Q. We're at the movie theater. He's sitting next to me. I just keep peeking over. The whole movie, he can't even tell me what the movie was about. The whole movie, he he's was on his, his phone. He's on his phone looking at the live tracker. Yeah. Constantly refreshing. And he's low-key like... <laughs> <laughs> It's bad, Q. It's bad. And, you hey, know, man, yeah. I loved that me being from Maryland and when I go back home, I do place parlays. Yeah. I don't do 100. I play, at the most, I will do a $20 parlay. Obviously, at you the play most. 20, D, and then win 100. Yeah. Or if you play 20 and bet six, you go in 350. Yeah. Then and you're going to take 30, 20 for that. I'm going to take 10 yeah. here or five. You take five exactly. and win 112. Exactly. Like, it just depends. Like, yeah. So, not to say I don't gamble because when yeah. I'm home, I do play parlays. But for one, and my net, my net gross or my my net, like as far as like whether I'm broke even, have or above or below, yeah. I'm above like 300 on FanDuel. And I've placed a lot of bets, like, but I'm above, which is all that matters. If you break even, when you place a bet, if you break even, that's a good day. Yeah, of course. Seriously. Of course. But um, so not to say that I don't place, but I loved the fact that it was only for when I went home. Okay. The fact that, you know what I'm saying, Pete, bro, it Q, people will roll out of bed. Oh, the finals on tonight? Shit, I know Curry going to drop 20. Let me play some $50 From, from your it. damn bed. From your bed, Q. People yes. going to fall in with that that rush of making money from so their bed. They're going to turn in Pookie from New Jack City. With I'm that telling you, Q, pipe. just remember that we're having this conversation. You're going to see it. You're going to see it slowly roll out. It'll take a few months before that. Because I'm hits. definitely going to get in on the March 11th. Yeah. The coming. Yeah. And did you lose your ass off when your Eagles got their asses kicked in the Super Bowl a couple years ago? Because that was embarrassing. To so the Chiefs? Oh, man. Well, you know I, who kicks your ass. Well, they didn't kick our ass. We lost by three points. That's not the ass kicking. We lost. Y'all set a record. For what? Y'all set a record for the highest scoring loser in the Super Bowl. Okay, and what else? I mean, as a Cowboys fan, I just felt like y'all got your ass. We did, we lost. We didn't get our ass kicked. But yes, to answer your question, I lost like four hundred dollars that right. game. And y'all was one and done this past season, right? Yeah, I didn't okay. bet on that playoff game, but All yeah, right. I, well, I lost about four hundred dollars. You want to know something funny? I watched the game in Philly at Xfinity Live, and this one dude, um, after the game, like we left early. This one dude storms out the building. He's like, I just lost my fucking house. That's a damn shame. Yeah. You're not embarrassed by being an Eagles fan? I love that. It's so lit being an Eagles fan. It too. is? It's so lit. Because you guys was the laughing stock of the league this year. But Q, y'all lost in I'm the first round. To you the, guys but y'all, laughing. but y'all have been the laughing stock of the league. Yeah, we were the laughing stock this year. But y'all yeah, have think, been. Yeah, I mean, you y'all have been. But y'all have been the laughing stock for the past 29 years. How? Because y'all are one and done every year. We're not one and done. Two years ago. We, okay, we, we, y'all went to the second round. Okay, but yeah. y'all have never made it to the NFC Championship That's hard since to do. I've been born. That's hard to do. It's a damn shame. <laughs> Well, we've done it about 10 times. I mean, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying, I, I, to me, I'd be embarrassed to be an Eagles fan. I, just, I love I being just, an Eagles fan. Well, well shit, you're a, how did you even become a Cowboys fan? You're well, from Charlotte, I, North Carolina. <laughs> we ain't had no team here. Okay, so why the Cowboys? Because they were winning? <laughs> no, Danny White wasn't winning back in the day. Danny White was our quarterback. He wasn't winning. No, you, you're you like... You I be, was like five. And you was became a Cowboys like, fan when they had Roger Staubach. No. <laughs> now, stop it, dude. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> Try to sit up and lie. Yeah, like I took Harriet Tubman to the prom or something. 
Stop it, man. No, Q. man. Rosa Parks didn't babysit me. But you babysat Dolly Parton. <laughs> Dolly nah, Parton. No, nah, I'm just saying, listen, I was I became a Cowboys fan when I was like five, six, and I stayed with him, man. But there's no way I just, I would be embarrassed to be an Eagles fan today. I mean, personally, I would. I don't know how you guys. You think being an Eagles fan is more embarrassing I, than being a Cowboys I fan, Q? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. Do you know I'm that more... everyone hates y'all? I mean, I mean, people hated Jesus. But we're talking about the Cowboys. Okay. Well, that I'm doesn't mean y'all are great. People hated the Patriots, but they were great still when they had Brady. Right. People hate y'all, but y'all still suck. That's the difference. Well, I think when you go 12 and 5 the last three years, you don't suck. And they ain't got a playoff win in between. But now what because... to show for that, Q? If we're going to do this, let's do this. Because, see, this came from nowhere. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm, I'm, we're I'm, having a good show. I'm chilling, too. And then too. you come I'm... out of nowhere talking about my Eagles. Well, I won't be embarrassed. Oh, damn. And then I'll, then I'll, then I'll then finish my dropping drink. The, dropping the drinks. I'm glad I finished. I want it was some a more. reason you just dropped it, because you're talking <laughs> bullshit. That's a sign from God. Slap the cup out your hand and say, stop talking that bullshit. I will be embarrassed to be an Eagles fan, I personally, because what y'all did the previous year then for some reason you lose your oc and your dc and you thought your monkey ass was going back I this did. year I did. right and i told you you wasn't in the yeah. offseason. season jalen hurts took a step back and uh he, our team took a step back right that's what i'm saying so well, i'm just gonna say just hurts our team took a step well, he's back the leader. okay but he still went off this year like, well, he wasn't an mvp about? candidate this year last year was the mvp candidate because because he's not an MVP candidate, maybe he took a step. Well, off. I'm saying like you know what Cam Newton won the MVP in 2015. Yeah, he couldn't maintain that MVP type level play. We're not, but Hurts did not fall off. The whole team. Oh, he fell off tremendously. Our play calling was Q QB draw, wide receiver screen. Like who wants MVP? Kept doing that? That? What's that dumbass play y'all kept doing? What are you talking the about? Push dumbass? from hit Our me QB from, sneak. Hit me from behind. What is it called? Oh my God. What I don't know. What is it called? The tush. What is it called? Y'all call it the tush push. The tush push. The media call it the you tush push. You're not embarrassed that your team is running a play called the damn tush push? Why would I be embarrassed about a un an unstoppable play? It what? is literally unstoppable. The tush push. It is an unstoppable play. Name, if, I, if, if I'm a man. If I, I saw that play stop three times out of 99 plus attempts. If I'm a man and my team is doing something called a tush push. That's a QB sneak. Q, that Tom means, Brady did the exact same play with the Patriots numerous times. If but I'm the a, only reason we're talking about it is because it's the Eagles and because it's Jalen Hurts. If I'm a man who cheers for a team, who team does play called the tush push. Which is unstoppable. That means I might have to start sitting down to pee. Are you serious? That's, that's, because we have an unstoppable play? <laughs> okay, well, let's do this, Q. <laughs> Since we're here. You're not embarrassed by that play? No. The tush it's push. Unstop Q, you were a teenager the last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl. You were 18. See, see, you weren't old enough all, to buy a cigarette. Watch this. This is how I dismounted that Super Bowl talk when it comes to the Cowboys. Number one, since, what, 90? The, the, the San Francisco 49ers? We're Super not talking about the 49ers. Oh, no. Yes, their drought is longer than y'all. No, there I'm not going to let y'all get, let you get that off. No, because we're talking about the Cowboys. Okay, let me say this. Let the 49ers this. fans are arrogant, but they're second in place behind the Cowboys. Y'all are first when it comes to arrogance and delusional. Y'all are first. That's why nobody likes y'all. People talk about our Super Bowl uh, drought, winning drought. Not getting there, winning Super Bowl. Getting number there. Y'all haven't got there since Number either. one. Out of the, the was it twenty something years, we've only had the talent to get there maybe twelve years. It don't matter. Can, well, now wait a minute. Can no. we not rebuild? It don't Can matter. Can we not rebuild? Do you think when the Giants when won those two the... Super Bowls, they had a Super Bowl team roster? No. People didn't right. go into the season saying, "Oh, they're definitely going to win a Super Bowl." It was like they'll be lucky if Listen, they want to. I give they, you the wrong the years and the current Dak years. We fall on our face, mm -hmm. but the mother damn years when we have Emmitt, we have Troy, we have Irvin, we have Dion, we have our dope ass defense. We had new head coaches and we had all kind of goofy quarterbacks. We wasn't predicted to win or pick to win a Super Bowl beginning of the season. And people, I got poor drink to this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. People, people keep putting oh, that on bad. us. It's out. Just more in there. Oh, it is. Pe people yeah. keep saying that, and that's unfair to the Cowboys fans uh, that we didn't have the talent to win it. So when they clump all those years together, it's nonsense. And I can easily say this. When people say the Super Bowl thing, I can easily say, because I never go to the Super Bowl conversation because it's, it's irrelevant. I can say, you know what? Unless your team has the same amount of Super Bowl titles as we do, I can't talk to you. And if that's the case, I'm going to talk to 49ers, Patriots and Steelers fans, but I refuse to say that. I don't say that. I can easily say that, and I just just kill our Super Bowl talk. That's why I don't go to it. I can't because how many Super Bowl rings y'all have? We have one. Watch Super, this. We have one Super Bowl. Okay, we got five, right? That's why I never had this conversation because it's too easy. 
Why y'all don't have five like us? <sighs> because we fell short in the big games. That's what I'm telling you. So that's why I don't want it's unfair for me to smack you around with Super Bowl ring talk. That's why leave the Super Bowl. You can say suck and hate it, but leave the Super Bowl ring talk. When you talk to Cowboys fans, mm-hmm. leave it over here. Because all we have to say is, why y'all don't have five? But who's proud to live 30 years in the past? Because you don't jump off the band. I'm not living in the past. You are, Q. I, I'm glad our coach came back. Those five, Mike rings, those five rings are from 30 plus years ago. Okay, but you got to put... Okay, you keep them. You don't get Who? rid of them. No, nah, you're not getting rid of them. So I why not you focus brought, on you the brought I don't, Why not focus... Well, you brought up the Eagles. Right. I don't bring, I don't, you're I don't, gaslighting. I don't bring up rings, You know what so. gaslighting means? That's like a new term. Gaslighting, oh, insecure, damn. and... Uh, Nar- narcissism, those are like new terms. Have you been hearing those lately? No, you're I gaslighting. Don't. I don't. One dude asked me that I want that I want some gas, and I was at the gas station. I was an idiot. I ain't know he was talking about smoking weed. And I said, Nah, dude, I'm good with the gas. I just filled up. He said, Nah, bro, I'm talking about weed. I ain't know what the hell he was talking about. Y'all got all these different names for drugs now. You young people, crazy. How many different names y'all got for drugs? They call it Za now. Now come on, man. <laughs> they call it Za Za Za. That's short for exotic. <laughs> They call it Zah. Zah? Yeah, Zah. You got gas. You got I, loud. I get that. Yeah, well, why is it loud? Because the smell is very loud. You know what? Y- y'all the same generation that was uh, putting uh, dishwashing pods in your damn mouth. I did taste dishwashing powder. That's crazy. And no, y'all was in the pods. Like the, the dishwashing pods. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Yeah. No, no, that's Gen Z. Let's, well, let's clear this right now. Millennials and Gen Z are not the same. What are you? I'm a millennial. I was born in 94. The cutoff is 96. Okay. See, I don't know the Zodiac signs. This I just know a... I'm an Aries. So when that song come on, what's that number one Zodiac? And I say, Aries. I don't know no signs. I don't know nobody's signs or what this they ain't pers- even signs. Again, God bless CMS public school No, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm adding to the conversation. I no. Because um, I don't know the, people... the generation stuff, nor but I don't see, know the signs. Zodiac goes back in 90. As soon as he buy that wine, I just keep it from behind, ask you what's your name, what's your sign. Yeah. That's when it, the Zodiac shit been popping I know, it's been on. in the 70s. Yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah. I, I mean, but... Um, I just don't know him. No, I mean, stuff does change, but stuff cycles too. Like I heard um, this dude I work with, he works in uh, the public school system. He said that the middle school or high school kids are saying my dukes for mom. They're saying my See, dukes. The dude that said that, he's probably what, the janitor there? He's a custodian? I mean, he's he's an older gentleman, but he's, he's a teacher. A, he's he's a teacher. A he said they say my dukes. Yeah. What? Wait. Yeah. Hey, 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 y'all, I just mopped this floor. Y'all watch out. I just... I just mopped this floor. No, he's a teacher. Oh, okay. So they say my dukes. All right. Well, listen. But anyway, I'm just saying, basically, uh, I, I would be embarrassed to be an Eagles fan. I would. And I would be. Did we not win the division and this I year? Would, to, but for, to you, nothing. If you was on the stand. But nothing to show for it. If you was on the stand. But nothing to show for it. You have nothing to show for it. I don't it. care that the Eagles. If you, you don't answer questions. Whoever you defending in yes, court, y'all want to, yes, the y'all want to division to just to get your ass kicked the next week by the Packers, by Jordan Love. Well, last time we saw y'all, who won the game? Last time y'all Cal- did. That's right. And then we won earlier. It went one and one. Last Here's time. the thing, you. What did Jenna Jackson tell you? What have you done for me lately? I don't care about regular season I, I do. I accolades. care about all of it. Why not? Because I it's about more the Super victories. Bowl. It's this about what the we get Super Bowl. Or out the damn camera. It's about the Super Bowl at the end of the day. I don't care about you regular season. You got embarrassed accolades. last time you went. You no, we did not. The city. We did not. All right. I'm not going to lie. That was that was the toughest loss I've ever dealt with in my life. I know. You was drunk on a damn train up there. Was you Philly? I was in Philly. You was drunk on a damn train. Jose Cuevo. Yeah. <laughs> that was tough, kid. What was my man named from South of the Sun, the drunk? It's your favorite show. What Excuse was it? Me. No, no, Rallo. Oh, Woody. Woody. That's a that's a classic drunk. <laughs> Woodrow, name. classic drunk. He I'm was not, awesome. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That was we're gonna end it with this. That was a very tough loss because yeah. it was like that was our best chance to do it. And it was like I was in Philly and I and you and you saw the videos I, I was making yeah. before games. Like I, knew, I knew, I knew we were going to the Super Bowl that year. From week one, my video said February 14th, I'll see y'all in um where was the Super Bowl play that? Well, first of all, all that's a damn Arizona. crap shoot. You don't know that. You don't no, know. No, Q, that. but here I'm telling you, I'm telling you, from that year to this past season when I made my pregame videos, I did not feel the same. 
I didn't. Like, and I had nothing to prove that we were going to the Super Bowl because but the year before we were average. We lost in the first round to the Bucs. I didn't. Like, oh, yeah, it was yeah, nothing yeah. to really show that we were going to be as good as we were. But well, Jalen Hurts had to show that he can be a star in this league. And I knew it was going to happen. And I he just did. knew. Like, I knew we were going to win the Super, that right. Super Bowl. So for me to go to Philly and watch the game, and that was one of the best Super Bowls I've watched. And just like, I don't know, like that was a very, I'm still not over it, to be honest with you. I'm still not over it. That was a very tough loss to deal with. I just very think tough the Eagles loss. are more overrated than the BMF series. You watch all that BMF? No, I don't. I saw all that power shit 30 years ago that was called New Jack City. So, you know, that's, that's what it is. But, Rock the um, block, baby. Yeah, shout out to my, my light skin joint. And my, my my two youngest man, and uh, we're just not gonna. I appreciate you having me on your show, man. And yeah. I'm definitely gonna take a, a shot of this joint right here, Magic, Magic Mind, Mind. Yeah. boost energy and focus. So make sure y'all pick up the Magic Mind joint. Now listen, I know yeah. you're getting up there in age. Do not think that this cures erectile dysfunction. It's not for that cue. <laughs> it's for productivity, energy, it. and focus. All I right. I know you're kind of getting out of the game now. It's not for that. So don't take this. Hit up your wife. Then you're gonna do something. And then you disappoint her yet again. <laughs> It's not made for that. It's made for productivity, <laughs> energy, and focus. All right, I got you, right? I got you. I but mean, on the real, um, yeah. uh, you know, thank you for coming on this, yeah, on man, this show, absolutely. man. I would love to run it back because literally we can talk about 100 things. Oh, we can, yeah, yeah. we do that, you know, when we was at the Y. It's just our first joint, man. It's our first joint. Yeah. I definitely come back on and uh, have you back on my show. We're going to knock yeah. it out, man. And shout out my man Jordan Jackson, who was on here, man. Yeah, 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 he, yeah. he is yeah. JJ. Yeah. And I like to have Cat Williams told him to keep that joint. Yeah. I performed with Cat Williams in 2006. It was me, really? Cat Williams, Tone X, and Lavelle Crawford at mm -hmm. the Winter Homecoming. Yeah. Like, man, come on, man. I've, I've been slinging jokes for a long time, man. So, no, you yeah. can tell. You're very sharp and you're very witty. L yeah. Literally, like, my my comebacks and my slight remarks I got from you. Right. Like, how, like, on this podcast, like, I'm chill. Like, I don't try to be funny. Right. I know I'm a funny dude, but yeah. I don't, I don't like, change my voice and do extra shit to be yeah. funny. My funny is very subtle. Like, yeah. I'll throw very subtle comments, and that's part of my humor. And I, I got that just from as far as you being witty and quick on your feet with jokes. Like, the whole episode, you've been saying, uh, like, earlier, you were saying, oh, I haven't seen that many such and such and yeah, such and such. Like, yeah. I picked up that from, like, yo, yeah. that shit is, because it shows how sharp you are. Right. Right? And yeah. I picked that up as opposed to doing extra shit to be funny. Like, I don't do this shit where I try to, like, you know, get, like, change my voice no, and no, be no, real no. energetic to be yeah, funny. Yeah, I just... Yeah. I think the calmer you are right. and you're still able to be funny, the more effective it is. Well, your home, I appreciate it. Your homework assignment is to uh, watch five John Hughes movies. Okay. All well, right. I've seen Breakfast Club. You need to watch Uncle Buck. Never seen Uncle Buck. I, I mean, Home Alone. You mm -hmm. see Home Alone, right? Mm -hmm. All right, The Great Outdoors. No. Okay. What What about Pretty in Pink? I know what it is because it's the girl from Breakfast Club, but right, I never watched about, it. Well, first of all, her name is, um, um, uh, okay. Yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah, her name is. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Oh, you need to watch. It's gonna come to me in a second. I can yeah. see her name. Yeah. Uh, planes, trains, and automobiles. Okay, never seen that. All right, too. All right so I, I, I watched John Candy and here. Steve Martin. Planes, trains, okay. and automobiles. Yeah. Actually, my man G Depp had a line. He said, "Steve Martin is that the dude? Uh, Steve Martin. You know, he was in Three Amigos. That's the dude from um. You got uh, it. From uh, what's it called? Ah, uh, shit, Die Hard." I'm about to choke the shit out of you. That's Bruce Willis. Yeah. Steve Martin was not in Die Hard. Who's Steve Martin? <laughs> I just told you. He was in Three Amigos with Chevy Chase and uh, Martin Short. That's not ringing a bell? Doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Um, Roxanne. He had that long nose. Roxanne? Yeah, he had that long nose. Roxanne Shante? I no. don't... I don't know, Steve. Long nose. You know what? Yeah, I appreciate y'all watching this episode of Day by Day. I'm finna get the hell out of here before I choke the shit out of Davon because his movie references are all over the place. Again, he was born like nine years ago. So let's let's get the hell up out of here, man, before I choke the shit out of you, man. Then we're gonna be on the episode of Dateline or uh, 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 Snap or something. Let me get the hell up out of here. No, listen, let me give you a proper your proper outro. Thank you for coming on the show on the rail. Um, you know, like I said, we gotta run this back. Yeah. Uh make sure y'all tap in with Q every Friday on Fox Sports Radio yeah, Charlotte. Man. Every yeah. Friday from four to six PM Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, man. Uh, what else you got coming up as far and follow as follow me on all my social media. Yeah, I'm a, well, I'm gonna tag that in the in the description. Well, I don't know if y'all are not. I don't know. I'm not a hater, Q. Okay. I, at Real QCB <laughs> on Instagram, at Real QCB on Twitter. My Facebook page is The Real QCB. My um, YouTube channel is The Real QCB. Click and subscribe. I, you know, I got all kind of good content on that for you guys. 
Hey, Onyx is lit. I've been to Onyx before. It's very I'm lit. I'm not a strip club dude. I, I, I get... Me neither, but I'll go sometimes. I've Onyx been... is lit. They got really good chicken wings. Nah, I, I can't put myself in that predicament. Yeah, I know, because you got a lady. Oh, well, listen. It's um, not about having the lady. It's just I go in there with sweatpants on and no drawers. I can't go up in Onyx like that. And, and then they really don't care about your problems. The strippers really don't know nah. what's going on about your day. But it can Some be dudes, good to let it out regardless. They don't give a damn about your day. Nah. Nah. But they'll ask. Right. Some dudes don't even have that, is what I'm saying. Some dudes don't even have the option to say how their bad day went. Yeah, I'll keep going to these strip clubs, acting like Goma Powell if you want to. I, you know what Goma Powell is? Nah. Make let me, sure y'all... Let, let me get sure, the hell up out of here. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, comment, share this out, help the algorithm. This is Day by Day. Subscribe so that way you can be kept up to date on every future episode. This ambassador don't know none, none of my references. I'm he, he, nothing. Go on, I'm saying Oprah, Oprah Winfrey. You seen Color Purple, the new one or the old one? Color Purple? Yeah, you saw the old one? That's um, that's the joint that... uh, the, Not Prince. The Color Purple, man. Yeah, the, the joint with Prince. Yeah. Purple Rain. Hey, man, you outside. <laughs> yeah, let, 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 me, let me get the hell up out of here. <laughs> I'm going to holler at y'all, man. Hey, oh, make sure y'all tune in. Make sure y'all follow my dog, QCB, Q, Yo, Queen City Bastard. We out of here, We're going to run this back, man. Yeah. But until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, <laughs> stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. Yeah, we out.